Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a wintry doorway with a Christmas wreath on the door and some Christmas lights hanging off the side. I'm going to try to keep this beginner friendly and uh, we're going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey everybody. And in chat for our live show. So if you've got questions during the show, you can ask how to answer them. Let's get started. Oops, it was I, playing. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you keep me talking at least? Or was yeah. I talking yeah, over you're the music? Yeah, you're talking over the music. Okay, well, that's all yeah, right. <laughs> I pressed that button instead of my oh. my microphone button. I'm a little rusty. That's okay. That's all right. Yeah, you give you, you a day off and you, you lose it. You want me to go out and come back in? <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving. We we had our all well, our family here for that, so it was a lot of fun. So we're back to work today, though. All right, uh, this is our example painting, uh, or example uh, image. Um, it is a lot brighter in my, in my example. I don't know why my printer, again, prints off uh, very badly, but um, I decided to do it on a 12 by 12 inch canvas panel this time. Um, if you want to use a nine by 12, you can. You just uh, situate it this way instead of long way. Um, I just wanted a little bit more room on the sides than the nine by 12 was going to give me. So that's why I went with a little bit bigger canvas. And I've coated it with a um, coat of 50-50 uh, Thalo Blue Green Shade and Burnt Sienna. So this is uh, that teal blue that uh, we've got going on in the background. And I've used a 12, inch, 12 by 12 inch Pro Mixed Media Plain, plain Air Paint Board by Fredericks. There are Fred, Fredericks is our canvas sponsors and uh, we really appreciate them for providing our canvases tonight. Uh, let me go over our brushes really quick. We're going to be using some Princeton brushes tonight. Number 12 bright, number four bright, possibly number two, number one round. These are the 6100 series. And then I've got a couple angle brushes. I'm not sure if I'll use all of these, but I'm just gonna have them handy just in case. The angle shaders, the Velvet Touch, quarter inch and three eighths inch, and uh, the Princeton Select fan brush and Deerfoot Stippler, 3 8 inch, and this one is the 10 aught Bristol Fan. And then I've got a smaller round for some details like berries and things like that. Uh, this is number one round. And then I've got the Willows Blenders that I have been enjoying using. I don't know, like I said, if I'm going to need them or not, but we'll have them just in case. So um, the reason that I started with this dark background is because a lot of the um with the wood grain it just uh, i think it'll be give us a nice uh, backdrop for our lighter colors to go on top of um to have this dark and it'll just kind of give us a head start on our painting tonight so that's why we did it that way i'm going to go over the drawing really quick with you so if you measure on your canvas whatever size canvas you want to use um, of course this is 12 inches this way and our our door is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five and three quarter inches, looks like. So almost half this length um, to this length, if that makes sense. So like this um, can be doubled here and here, um, just about. So this is almost like six inches here. And then, you know, that would be the length of our canvas. I don't know why I'm saying that. You understand what it is. <laughs> I love watching you do math. Math. <laughs> Hashtag math. Well, what's that straight thing that you Hashtag had out earlier? Math. <laughs> That's so un unusual. <laughs> All right. And then our uh, the next thing I did is just draw our, uh, once you kind of have your boundaries for your door, is uh, draw the actual wreath in here because I wanted it up towards the top. So I just kind of did a big old circle here and I actually started out with it down here and I moved it up. So I want it fairly close to the top, maybe about an inch and a half from the top or so. And then I'm going to do uh, about a half an inch down. I'm gonna do my two lines for the door panels and I want them to be kind of centered. So we're just gonna kind of do those all the way through the wreath. They're gonna be right in here. And like, you know, like, uh, if you want to use a ruler to get these measurements just right, uh, you probably should do that. I probably should do that, but I'm not. I'm going to move that one over a little bit. Looks like this one's a little bit bigger than the other one. And then there's another one that kind of spans right up underneath that goes that whole length. It's fairly small. 
And then there's two more that are the same width as these. So if you just kind of use your ruler here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use that ruler as my edge. And I'm just using regular school chalk there. Okay, so let's do right here. To the millennials who don't know what that is, we used to use that to write on chalk boards. Yeah. Back in the old days, before cell phones. Before cell phones and smart boards. Smart boards and are smart like the boards coolest thing ever boards. invented. So. Our boys just got on the tail end of that when they just started. Spencer did. All right, so there we go. There's our little door frame there. And then, um, this seems crooked to me. Let me make sure that I got that straight. You gotta watch your canvases too because they can be a little bit um, crooked. Like the top edge of your canvas sometimes will stick out up, up over here. And so if it does, it'll throw off your line. So just make sure that you're kind of check check your sides here and check at the bottom make sure that it seems um, square okay so that looks about right and then we're just going to do our little snow bank so there's like a little snow and just kind of have these a little higher than that so you've got room for your snow to go underneath here and it's just going to go like that all right so that's pretty much all the drawing we're going to do there's going to be a door frame that's going to come in here on this side just a little bit there and there, and then um, another one like on the other side, like a flat here and here on the wood. But we're, I'm going to use my ruler and my brush and just kind of do that in later. So let's go ahead and wet down my number 12 bright and grab some white here, some of my phthalo blue. I'm going to make a, a lighter mixture of the color that we did for the background. So phthalo blue and burnt sienna make a really pretty teal color. And then adding white just makes it lighter. Obviously. So I'm going to keep it fairly dark on the edges here. And I'm just going to kind of lightly start adding this. And I'm barely touching that brush down on the canvas to skim it and I'm not I'm gonna go right over the snow because I don't want to have to worry about painting over the snow and around it and go next to it just trying to kind of keep these lines horizontal did we ever go over the paints Oh, I didn't. No. No, because somebody just asked for the palette cam. Uh-oh. You didn't have it on? Well, no. Oh, okay. Because you didn't go over the paints. I just <laughs> forgot all about it. You went from drawing to painting. Painting. Okay. So, uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green yellow shade, phthalo blue green shade, dioxazine purple, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Sorry about that, guys. I swear we know what we're doing. We, we were just all proud of ourselves. Like, yeah. No, we, we know what we're doing. We started on time. I know. It's amazing. Hey, uh, somebody would like to know, is this considered a beginner painting? I I think so. I, I think so. I'm going to try to make it as beginner friendly as I can. So this is so far so good. Um, this is like... The main thing to think to think about with what I'm doing now is to keep your brush fairly dry. I mean, there's water in there, but um, the, I don't have a ton of paint on my brush, and I'm barely skimming it so that I'm getting these streaks, and you can see that dark color through. That's what we want. So um, if you're getting a solid area of color, then just um, take some of the paint off on a paper towel or something, wipe a little of that paint off, and then I'm just kind of barely skimming it on there. It's just going to grab the texture of the canvas and pull it off and create these lines on here. Really easy to do. Really easy. You'd be surprised. So. And then we're going to just do the same thing on our door here. But I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush so I can kind of go in between these sections. So I'm going to get my number four for this. I've got a little bit of water on it. And 
grab some of this color and we're going to just start with this kind of medium color and then we'll add lighter color too but um, we're going to just start with this color first and I'm going to just try to go okay we got some late yeah. comers yes they would like to know what your background color was again it was equal parts thalo blue and burnt sienna so 10 gallons with no white 10 gallons of thalo blue and 10 gallons of burnt sienna no well that's equal amounts i just squeezed out a little bit probably about the same amount that's on my palette right now okay I squeezed it right onto the canvas and just mixed it while, you know, so that I didn't dirty up a palette. I just squeezed a little bit of each color on here and oh, just used okay. my um, large gesso brush, this gesso brush, and just got a little water and just smushed it around and pushed it around and filled up the whole canvas really fast. So, so that's not against the art rules. Mm -mm. <laughs> nice. So these sideboards are kind of going this way. The one in between there. And it's fine if they don't really look very clean. Don't don't worry about if they look a little bit messy because this is very kind of rustic. So we want it to have that feeling. A little bit more. If the paint is just not coming off your brush, add a little bit of water to your to your paint, and it'll moisturize it or you know, get it to where it'll come off a little bit better for you. I'm going to go right over the top of my line there a little bit just to get rid of that chalk, so I can kind of see what I'm working with. I'm going to go back in with my darker color and darken that back up here in a minute, but. So again, these side ones here and here are going to be this way. Same thing with this piece right here. And I'm going just inside my chalk lines. get to that part just stop right there you can stop a little bit before it too if you want a little gap there I could just leave a little bit of that darker color right there so can we say hi to everybody yeah hi everybody <laughs> glad you could join us you could find us at the right time yeah I had it marked the wrong time on there so hopefully everybody didn't get fooled by the for some yeah time zone for some reason it <laughs> defaulted to the Pacific time zone just, okay it's just pet peeve <laughs> if I don't watch it it's like it's like I've never once changed the time zone on any of my videos or my channel or anything to a different time zone but central and somehow every now and then when I put my live shows up the time zone gets changed by the computer system on it's not my fault it's all I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it but <laughs> somehow it defaults to the Pacific time zone sometimes and if I don't catch it it like I didn't catch it this time yeah, I'm checking your other ones, and they it's, seem to be the right time Yeah, zone. they all seem... I know, that's the thing. It's just like, it's very random, and it, it... I never, you know, it's just like one out of every, you know, 50 videos that I... If, if I schedule them, you know, sometimes they'll just do it. So it doesn't do it often enough for me to check every time, you know. So it always, like, takes me by surprise when it does it again. I'm like, ah! 
frustrating, but sorry to those. Hopefully everybody found us okay. Our normal time. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We are doing these live shows, painting, teaching folks how to paint twice a week, live on YouTube here. And uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays. So Tuesday nights are always at 6 p.m. and Saturdays are always at 2 p.m. unless we, if if I change my schedule, I will post it on my com community board. So there's like a community tab up there at the top of my channel. If you go to my home page, home channel homepage by just clicking on my face or my name under my videos there, it'll take you to my channel homepage. And there's a community tab there. And sometimes, you know, if I've changed something, um, I'll post a, my schedule there usually before before I, uh, well, like, you know, I posted that we weren't going to be having a show on Tuesday and, or Thursday last week. Or, I'm sorry, Saturday. Dark. You know, dude, you understand what I'm saying, hopefully. I completely understand. I completely understand. And I think they do, too. Okay, good. We got several first-time... Ooh, live good. viewers, they were all excited about catching us live, so nice. welcome to them. Yeah. And anybody else who just happened to be popping in, see what's going on, welcome. Hope you like what you see. We're a little bit more organized than how we started, but <laughs> that's because we took Saturday off to be with family for the holiday break here in the U.S., and we're back now. Back to work. Back to work on Giving Tuesday. Ah, yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. This is Giving Tuesday. If you haven't already seen that, I think I think it's a U.S. thing. I'm not sure yeah. if it's worldwide, but um, I know Facebook is matching donations um, for nonprofit organizations. For nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So if you've got one of your favorite charities, today's the day to do it because you can donate through Facebook and or we put a bill. We put a a little button off the side there uh, on the video up on the the little eye that's got the circle. Um, it doesn't. I don't think it shows up on phones, maybe, but most devices it'll it show. does on it, my. It does iPad. on yours. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that will, if you kind of go click on that, it'll drop down uh, just some different things, information, and different videos and things. And then one of the little things on there is the um, charity that we give to, which is the. River Valley Food for Kids, mm -hmm. and they feed kids lunches and meals all through the year, uh, even when they're not in school. So, yeah, they try to make sure that no kid goes hungry. Yeah, in this area, it's a great organization. I've volunteered. Yeah, Mark's they're gone down and separating and loading and moving boxes. Yep. Stuff that I can do, stuff that doesn't take a lot of thought. <laughs> so just, they say, put that in that box. Yes, <laughs> me do. I can. Me do that. Me do that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're inclined, you can use that link and give to them too, if you feel like it. We just provided it up there for your convenience. All right, adding, making a little bit more of this background color here darker color just making a bunch of it so that I have it to work with and I'm going to scoop it up since it's kind of spreading out if you will scoop it up like scoop it up on your brush like a shovel and then just kind of set it down and twist it'll plop it down into one little spot here that way it won't dry out as fast because this thin stuff is going to dry out really fast all right Do you know what a gauche paint is? Yeah, it's a watercolor type. Uh, it's an oh. opaque watercolor. So they, somebody w wanted to know, would they be able to do this painting? I would think so. Medium? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. I've never I've never tried gauche, so I don't know. Uh, or is it wa gouache? I'm not sure I how you pronounce know. it. Um, <clears throat> but... 
So I'm going to say... I'm not a watercolorist, yeah. so I just don't know. And I'm not an artist, so take this with a grain of salt. Uh-huh. I'm going to say, but like, you can paint with any paints. <laughs> That's been my observation. <laughs> so... It works best if you use paints, but... Right, to do paintings, paint. paints work paints the best. work the best for paints. Yes. Yep. Got it. Check. I've been watching you do this long enough, I kind of... Figured that out. Did you? Yeah, know yourself, but again, a disclaimer: I'm not an artist. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, all right, <clears throat> smart Alec. <laughs> all right, I've mixed some white with this color, and then I mixed some ultra uh, unbleached titanium. You can see the difference between the two uh, whites there. Hopefully, on the palette, this one's a lot more warm. Uh, it's got a little bit of more of a green undertone, and this one is a lot cooler. Um, so I'm just going to kind of mix the two of them together so that uh, I have like a, a lighter version of this. And I'm going to go in and start putting in some of these details on the door. Actually, let me use my number one round for this. I'm going to get some water on my brush and then I'm just going to scoop that paint right off of that brush. I got a bucket. Hmm? I got a button for that. Get a button for that. Oh, number one round. Okay, nice. Hopefully it's the select because that's what I put. Yeah, uh, no, it's not the select. Doug on it. It's the <laughs> number one round. <laughs> it's number one round in the six to one hundred series. It's not that big of a deal, honey. Not to you, but. Okay, well, it's yeah. i like I said, the brushes, the yep. numbers. Are different for I each know, I know. thing. I told you You've that told before. Me we... that. We've had that discussion. I know. Okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, number one round here is different from the Ooh, number one round here. You can see the much difference. Much different. This one's really smaller. And really, they make no sense. Each manufacturer just makes up their own numbers. So any that's the same manufacturer. This is both Princeton brushes. And those are the two number ones in the different lines. Wow. So each line has their own numbering system. So it would be nice if they made it standard, but they don't. So I have no idea why why they do it that way, but that's how it's done. So okay, I'm going to put my ruler up here. And I'm going to use my ruler. And this is the way you can kind of cheat and do these straight lines really easily. And just use my ruler and just use that right up against my brush to rest it. And just, and I'm just, you can kind of see how I'm doing it kind of lightly. So I'm not doing a really solid line. And that way I, I don't have to worry about it being perfect. If I kind of just brush it on really um, kind of impressionist style almost, you know, let it kind of drag and catch on the canvas texture. Um, I can get it kind of dry brush look and it also won't. Uh, it's a little bit more forgiving. You don't have to have the it being uh, just so, you know. Uh, it can be a little bit thicker or thinner. And because it's sort of imperfect anyways, it doesn't matter. You don't have to get it just right. So this is a really good thing, uh, you know, for beginners. Um, I think impressionist type painting like this is a really um, good way to... Good way to go because... Um, it's not as intimidating. Now, if you're a perfectionist, this may, you know, I'm sure you're going to get your straight lines just right and all of that. And that's fine, too, because that's kind of how I tend to paint naturally. So I'm trying to see. I just want to make sure that I start this line right about the way or where it should be. So I'm going to set that down. And I'm just kind of using my fingers to make sure that that's pushed flat against this edge since I'm not using my plastic one it doesn't work as well it doesn't lay as flat on the canvas as this metal one does so that's why I'm switched to this metal one you can see how much dirtier it is you <laughs> 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 like to use it a lot more for painting <laughs> we don't care about the numbers just the straightness right so, and I really if I was smart I would be doing the bottom ones too while I had this on here but I'm not smart obviously because I'm Doing them separately, but that's okay. But I am going to go ahead and do this part right here. 
So one more time, and I'm writing it down. Thalo blue and burnt sienna? Yes, thalo blue and burnt sienna are 50-50. No white, just thalo blue and burnt sienna. That gives you that really dark teal color. So do we want to mention the chocolate? Yeah. Well, yeah, we can. We got Is it Jenny? Thank you, Jenny. More than you know who you are. Sent us, Sent us seized chocolate. Sent us an uh, empty box of chocolate. <laughs> At least that's what Angela knows. <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird kinda that she sent it already empty, but that's okay. Kind of odd, but yeah. <laughs> so strange. It was a really sweet <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yes, it was. Enjoying it. It's like, oh, yes. We like this time of year. All right. Let's see here. I am just doing, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just continuing now. I'm going to do these cross pieces here. It's really easy. Just takes a little patience. Take your time with it. If you've measured out your, uh, what I would probably do if you're going to be drawing this yourself is what I would do is probably draw it out on a piece of paper and then uh, use the tracing, you know, do, do all of your, um, you know, trace, trace it onto your canvas first, do your first layer of painting and then go back in and trace it again. If you lose any of your lines, because you know, you might lose some of your lines when you, uh, do your first layer on your door there. And that way you can make sure that your lines are, um, correct. And so this part will go on a little bit easier. And that's something that I would do for re recommend for any project with the beginner. If you are going to be drawing it um, yourself, that to do it, practice it on paper first, get it just way the way you want it on paper, and then transfer it onto your canvas with tracing paper, um, tracing paper and transfer paper. And it's a lot easier to do, a lot less stress to do it that way than to. Try to get it just perfectly the first time around. Okay, so I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here. This is the number two round now, or number two flat here. And I'm going to do my edge of my door here, the outside edge of my door. That little, um, the little uh, door frame that's right there. Okay, I'm going to use this color. And I'm going to go along here and just kind of lightly. And I'm using the number two because it's about the width of the the frame that I want it when I want it to end up being. So that's what I'm why I switched to it because it's kind of narrow and it'll give me about the right width for my door frame. Just be careful not to press too hard against your metal if you're using a metal ruler because it can cut your bristles you don't want to cut your the hairs of your of your uh, brush that would be very sad okay the outside of this door So we better be doing splatters tonight. Oh yeah, we're doing splatters. Okay, for sure. because the crowd's getting a little unruly. Heck yeah, it's one of the best parts of doing Christmas paintings because you get to do splatters, lots and lots of splatters. <laughs> 
All right, so I got it a little bit too dark that time, so what I'm gonna do is take my paper towel and kind of get it to a dry spot and just run it over that wet paint. It's gotta be wet still for that to work. See how it kind of took the t color down? It just kind of takes a little bit of the color off. Okay, and now I'm going to just use this brush, sort of randomly place some streaks in my wood. Try to keep it vertical again. If you get any that are like way too dark, you can kind of use your paper towel to kind of wipe them off, but. And if you're getting them a little bit like crooked, like that one kind of went sideways, you can kind of just try to cover it with other colors. You can get some of your darker color back in and put some of that over the top. So here's where I'm going to just kind of play with it. And I think I'm gonna switch to a little bit bigger brush. Play with it, add a little bit of this lighter color here and there on my painting. And it might help you um, not to do it, oops, well, not really, not to do it straight up and down like I'm doing it. Doing it side to side is actually going to be a little bit easier. So just make sure that you're kind of, uh, keep your eye on a reference like you know your uh, the outside edge of the canvas or something like that that so that you make sure that you're always kind of lining up your brush with that so you don't start getting weird angles here because you want to keep it vertical I do want some parts brighter than others, so I don't want to take out all these little streaky things. All right, I'm running out of colors drying on me. Spray your palette every now and then to keep their paints moist while you're working. I'm gonna grab some of that unbleached titanium again. Wiping off my brush so I don't have too much on there. There we go. And I'm going, you can see how, uh, when it, where I start the, the, um, start the line, I'll have like a solid edge right here, like a sharp line. So I'm going to go back and forth this way so that it blends out both ways. That way, uh, It doesn't look like a, I have a start or stop there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Just keep on, and I'm going right down over the top of where I think the snow is gonna go because I don't wanna have to try to paint around the snow. That would be futile. Just take too much time to try to get it just so, so. And we're going to add some white streaks or some lighter streaks to our door here. So I'm going to go inside the door frame here and add a little bit. And if I want to, if you want to, you can find a brush that's the exact width of your that section. So maybe something like this or this, this is the number 10. And then you can get it like a more solid section there. Do that up here. Do the raised panel and I'm not going all the way to that light section. I'm leaving a little bit of dark around it. You can kind of see. A little bit of a shadow in there. Back 
to my smaller brush here. So that's just one more layer. This one's just a little bit lighter than this last. So we did the dark, then kind of medium, and now this is the lighter, kind of the lightest color here. the hardest part about this is probably just making sure that you don't put too much paint on at one time you kind of have to be patient it does take it's kind of a process it's going to take a little bit of time just to get this down because if you're impatient and you put too much you know paint on your brush at one time then uh you know it'll be faster but it won't have this kind of broken look that we're going for here so if you want to keep it kind of rustic looking then make sure that you just kind of take your time and do this slowly, build up these layers slowly. Just making some more here. I'm going to use the edge of my brush and I'm going to make a highlight on the top of all these light sections. So I'm going to go in here and highlight the top edge of my highlighted door frame. And then And there are kind of more inserts, so if you want to, you know, get fancy about it, you can put another line in here on your door frames. You don't have to, but to make it even more realistic, do a second line just inside. Leaving a little bit of dark. Showing. And same thing here. So I'm sitting here looking at a door like I never have before. Why? Trying to figure out why does it have those little, will have those shapes on it. Why are they that number and in that order just looks so familiar. But who I said, know. Who said this is the way doors should look with this design? <laughs> well, they're all a little bit different, though. I mean, if you, uh, you know, this is kind of a classic look, but there's a lot of different ways that they do these inserts, you know, a lot of different ways that they create these doors. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of light. This chair is too noisy. I noticed it was very noisy. I thought, yeah, okay. I won't tell you what it sounded like, but... Yeah, I know it sounds it like sounds, flatulence. It does sound like flatulence. But it really we isn't. Call it the flatulence chair. I usually sit in one of our dining room chairs. That one's... But I'm we, sure it's a lot more comfortable there, though. Well, kind of. Kind of. And so I'm using an old cha office chair. It's squeaky. Kind of squeaky. At least that the, is the excuse I'm using right now. <laughs> That's awesome. It's 
your excuse. You're sticking to it. Yep. That's your story. I mean. Well, either I blame it on the chair or I blame it on Angela. So <laughs> you guys choose which I blame it on. It doesn't matter to me. It's the chair. <laughs> it's the sure. chair. Okay. For sure the chair. All right, so just kind of adding more, another layer of this highlight here, even more bright highlights. And this, you know, the the acrylics dry a little bit darker than when you put them down. So you may notice after you've done a couple layers here that you're like, oh, that's not as light as I want it to be. So just kind of continue until you get it kind of to the lightness that you want. And if you go over your lines or get too close to another color and, you know, you lose your dark areas, that's fine because we're going to do another one last layer of the dark and that you'll see it really make everything else kind of pop and come out three-dimensional. Okay, so I'm pretty, pretty close to where I want to be on this. To, let me see. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this brush. This is the number eight. I didn't mention it, but I'm going to grab a little bit wider brush. Actually, let me think. I might. I think I'm going to use this one. Actually, I'm going to use the three eighths inch angle brush because I can get it down into the tighter corners. So I'm going to get a little bit of that dark, dark color there. I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, let's add a little bit of burnt umber to it to make it even darker. Really dark. And to start with, I'm just going to... Oops, right, this one. I'm just going to do a straight line. I'm going to hold it along its edge here and... Just do a long line right there. Okay. Do the same thing here. Do a long line right there. And then while that's wet, I'm going to use the tip of that brush and just pull it out onto the door just a little bit. some of the bluer color. Make sure that your door is dry before you do this. So make, make sure that door is dry. I'm going to get a little bit of that light, that dark blue on the tip of my brush. That's a, it, this can be a flat brush or an angle brush, either one. And I'm going to press it flat on my palette over here back and forth really press down hard to get those bristles splayed out so that that paint gets really worked down into the bristles and keep it in the same spot so that the paint stays on the tip of the brush. So I want the darkest part here and I want this back end to be fairly pretty much clean. You can get a little bit of water on your brush and test it on a paper towel and that should be uh, fairly clean. So this side will have the paint, this side will be clean water. And um, we're going to float in some color on our door. So we go right up underneath that highlighted section. I'm going to go along this side of the door here. It's more even darker than there. A little bit more. I'm going to do it along in here. going to go all the way on the inside of this little insert here. Okay. 
get a little bit of water every now and then. I'm gonna pick up more paint. There we go. It's really dark under here, so I want it really dark, really heavy shadow. These side ones I'm not doing as dark, but right down here I'm gonna do a really dark line underneath each of these panels. Almost a solid line. See how that popped that out? Let's do it down to this one. It's gonna pop those right out. That's great. So let's do it right here. It's going to be the darkest uh, right up underneath. These side pieces are not going to be as dark, so I'm not doing those as dark and like right here too. Those are going to be lighter, but the part right up in here, you want to go nice and dark. And if you get it too dark or you know, you mess up or something, you can always go back in with your lighter color and cover up anything that you kind of don't like. So don't feel like this is set in stone. This is just, you know, if you get a line right there like I did, you can just kind of use your finger and clean it off. So could somebody use a liner brush to do this or do you a need what? a liner brush? No, this? you want no. a flat brush for this. Okay. Yeah, you need a flat brush for this technique because you need a, a flat brush to do the... I mean, you could do it if you were going to outline it, you could, but if you're going to do this floating technique, you have to have a flat brush for it. It won't work with the liner because you're doing a, a basically an ombre effect. You're, you're going from dark to light, and with the liner brush, you just have a solid color. You don't have any kind of various, variation of color. You really can't get... One tough ombre. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. I don't know why. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, where was I? I lost my train of thought there. You were painting. I was. I'm going to use the edge of the brush to kind of outline a little bit here. Just kind of emphasizing the the lines that I've already got there a little bit. Okay. Let's go over here on this side. Oh, you're going to have to probably zoom out because I need more room here. We need to do this so people can watch it on their VR headsets and, you know, Get that 3D effect. 3D effect. <laughs> I don't think we can stream from a 360 camera, can we? I don't think so. Well, I'm not sure. I wouldn't want to try it. <laughs> not very adventurous like you. Alright, let's do a line straight down here. Dark line there. I'm going to do another line here for my. You can use your ruler if you want to. But and I'm just going to kind of brush over it to kind of blend them in just a little bit. All right. And that's about all I'm going to do on the door. Um, we can add a little bit of shadowing up here. There's kind of a shadow all along that top edge uh, and the sides of the canvas, so maybe get a little bit bigger brush. 
and make a wash of this. And when I say a wash, I just mean you should be able to see through it on the canvas or on the palette. So I have enough water that I can see through it when I kind of pull it. It's watery. And I'm just going to kind of pull down from the sides and edges. With this watered down paint. Gonna tint what we already have there. You can kind of see what it does. We can add it over the top of any of this that we want to make look a little bit more uniform. Do another little line right here. Ooh, that's dark. And then if I do it too dark, like I just did, take my white paper towel and just kind of wipe. If that background color is dry, it's going to let me wipe it off. Grab some of my highlight color, put some of my highlight color back in right here. You may not have to do this part, I just... Went a little too dark right there. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's our door. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and add a doorknob to it. And it looks like our doorknob's kind of a dark. We use purple and burnt umber here. We'll create a black. I'm adding a little bit of our blue to it as well. And we'll put it in. It's pretty low on our picture. I think I want to, I guess it's right here. It doesn't seem right, but I'm going to put it there anyway. It's kind of a small doorknob. I've got a girlfriend that's, uh, she's got a mid-century house. And um, her doorknob is right in the middle of her door. It's really cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's when they were still trying to figure out doors. <laughs> so like, exactly how does this work? Anyway. They were playing with it, you know. They, they, yeah. <laughs> she can't find a replacement for it either. You know, that's the thing. It's like. Uh, the doorknob is like really specialized because you get, you know, the mechanism has to go all the way through the door into the thing and they just don't make those anymore. <laughs> so it was a good idea, but it, it it's not very practical for mm -hmm. like a homeowner. <laughs> all right. I made a little bit of lighter version and I'm just going to kind of put a little highlight on the top there. Just with a little bit of white. Added a little bit of brown because it was looking kind of purple. There we go. A little bit of highlight on our door. Fun. Okay, and we could, if you want to, you could go back in and do just one more, like really bright uh, on the inside here. Like, just really pop that out even more. See how that did. This is just if it's up to you. You don't have to do this part. You stop at any point that you are happy with yours. So that's really with any paintings that we're doing. You know, I would say just, you know, if you're if you get it to the point where you really like it, just don't don't go any farther. Just call it good. Because it's your painting. And you do, you know what your, you know, what your comfort level is on your painting. So I'm going to put another slat right there. Maybe, maybe two. You are farting up a storm over there, honey. <laughs> you are farting up a storm. This is like really noisy. I'm just going to use the edge of my brush to create some like little lines in the wood. Maybe a couple little knots like with the dots. Just keep it really random. I'm just kind of 
seesaw my brush back and forth up and down to create these kind of wood patterns. Just kind of random up and down zigzag is and then when I say zigzag I'm doing vertical. It's kind of zigzag so they're not moving too much. Kind of little dots. And now everybody believes you. <laughs> <laughs> It's Mark's farting too. <laughs> He's not farting. It's his chair. Okay, I promise. So I'm gonna get. I'm I gonna get the whoopee cushion for your chair now. <laughs> <laughs> There's that over there. I guess sound men can fart too. If ballerinas can fart. <laughs> That is our that is that is an old one. I don't know that anybody else but us gets that reference to the <laughs> ballerinas because that was from when Air America's Funny the videos was like first on air. It was one yeah. of their very first videos, little ballerina girl. Yeah. Farted and she's like her dad starts laughing. She says, Dad, ballerinas can fart too, you know. <laughs> so that's anytime anybody, you know has an accident in our home this is what they the excuse that gets just, said just don't trade me for a chicken <laughs> don't trade you for a chicken mm -hmm. I don't get that one I'm gonna do a little bit on this one you've already forgotten our just new gonna... inside joke oh yes oh yeah yeah yes <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about now sorry <laughs> yeah yeah no 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 I won't replace you with the chicken <laughs> Buster Scruggs. <laughs> You're not supposed to give it away. Huh? You're not supposed to give it away. Oh. Jeez. Okay, I'm just cleaning out my brushes really quick here because I'm going to start on my wreath. This is going to be the fun part. Okay, so we're already an hour down. Not too bad. I figured this would be about an hour and a half video, so... Let's do this. Let's go ahead and use this. If you want to start on that dinner, honey, I think we're probably about a... Really? Yeah, I think you got so. the wreath going? Yeah, I don't think the wreath's going to take very long. Okay. I'll be right back. I'm going to use some white, and I'm going to mix it with this blue here. Just a little bit of it. And I'm going to start my snow. And I'm using my 3 8 inch angle or a 3 8 inch deerfoot stippler. You can use whatever scruffy brush that you tend to like for kind of foliage and things like this, clouds, whatever you like using. I'm going to leave a little bit of that dark showing. So I'll just give it a little bit of depth there. And I'm not using the white yet. I'll use the bright white at the very end to give it even more depth. This is just our first layer of the snow. So I want to have a little bit of this light blue in there. Blue is a great undercolor, blue-gray, great undercolor for snow. If I had uh, ultramarine blue out here, I, which I don't today, but if I did, you could use ultramarine blue and burnt, burnt umber to do your shadow color for under. Yeah, with the gray underneath your snow. Just add a little bit more of the blue. But I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to grab some of the brighter white just on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to use that bright white. So you can see the difference there. And just add a little bit of that bright white. at the top of our snow, leaving that darker color in there underneath. Okay. 
Now, our wreath can be done in a few different ways. Uh, it's kind of a sort of a scruffy. I think I'm going to use this brush. This is the quarter inch uh, Willow's Blender. And I'm going to use my chalk and draw my circle out. So the circle starts kind of like if you think about your knot being or your nail being right about there. Your circle's going to start here. And go not much wider than the, the these two pieces, actually. It's kind of smaller. I'm making mine a little bit bigger. But... There, that's about right. Gonna keep it inside that. There we go. Draw my circle. Draw another circle just a little bit inside. So I have my boundaries of my wreath. I've got an outer boundary and an inner boundary. And then my ribbon is going to hang down here, which I don't have to really do yet, but it would be helpful to kind of know where it's going to go. All right, so there's my wreath. I'm going to use the, where is it, this one, and mix some dark green with my phthalo green and burnt umber. Make a really dark, dark color, and I'm just going to kind of use it to scrub in the boundaries of my wreath. And just make sure they're all kind of fuzzy. This is the dark under color. I'm going to even use some purple in here. Purple is a really good color to use with green. It's kind of a weird color to choose, but it makes a really beautiful dark, dark green. Really good for these dark parts in the middle here that we want. So I did the lighter green, kind of middle green on the middle uh, on the outside. Now I'm kind of scrubbing in some of this darker, really deep colored green on the middle part. I'll grab a little bit of that first color there, add a little bit of that darker color, and just kind of pull out some of the darker color out. There we go. Okay, and do the inner border of the wreath the same way. Just make sure it's all kind of fuzzy all the way around. So make it look much more realistic. And we don't have to do every single little leaf and berry. Well, we do, do need to do the berries, but you don't have to do every single little leaf here um, to get it to look fuzzy like that, that way. All right, so I'm going to grab the Unbleached titanium. Let's see what kind of green we get with that when we add we add a little bit more of that brighter phthalo green to it. And adding the purple brown mixture will make it more neutral. If I want a little bit more yellow, I can add a little bit more of that and add a little bit of that cadmium yellow medium. There we go color. All right, and then I'm going to just pick a few little spots and just flick out word. And they're not everywhere, so I'm just going to kind of pick a few little branches to add these highlights to. You can zoom in on this, honey. That'd be good. There we go. Good, good. And using this kind of scruffy brush kind of allows me to get some sort of fuzzy edges that I want to get here. Make sure your background is dark enough, otherwise this won't really uh, show up. So you have to have that really dark green underneath for it to make sense. And... They kind of all go in different directions, so I'm not doing them all in the same direction. Some of them I'm kind of pointing downward, some of them I'm pointing upward. They're all kind of going in different directions. 
Some of them are going to look kind of just like dots if they're coming kind of more straight up at us. I don't want, I do want to bring this down a little bit. Okay. So let's do another one with a little bit brighter. You got a little green. That's obviously way too bright. So I'm going to add a little bit of that darker color. neutralize it. That purple acts against that yellow since they're opposite on the color wheel. Purple and yellow opposite on the color wheel. They neutralize each other so they'll make a brownish color or gray for us. So mix that with our green and we get this kind of neutral brighter yellowish green but not, not quite as bright like we don't want it neon green. Just want another touch of another color in there. And if we want to make it even brighter, we can add some white. And just add that to just a few little spots. See, I'm just sort of tapping and sc scratching at it. And you can do this with a regular brush too. You don't have to have this kind of sc scrubby brush. The scrubby brush will just make it a little bit easier to get these kind of textured edges, but um, you can totally do this with any brush, uh, like an angle brush or something like that too. Okay, so I think that that's good. Got some dark and light in there. If you got rid of all your dark areas, you can go back in with your dark now and add some of that back in. Maybe going through and just kind of add some little really pockets of really dark color to give it some depth in a couple areas. There we go. Pretty. I'm going to grab a little bit of just the brighter brighter thalo green mixing it with that kind of uh, yellowish color. I'm going to add just some of the brighter phthalo green in a couple spots too. Just to give that kind of Christmassy green color in there. If you do it over the top of the, some of the lighter areas it'll really show up. Okay, I think that's good. I'm happy with that. So let's make some pine cones. I'm going to grab some of that uh, Dumber. I'm just going to tap in some little pine cone shapes here and there. What? You know how frustrated you're making everybody right now. Why? Oh, just pop in a pine cone shape. Okay, boop, well, boop, boop, boop. okay, so we're just done. oval, oval shape. And I'm kind of tucking it in. I'm finding a spot where you can see there is like a, a maybe a V shape where I can kind of tuck it down in so it looks like it's sort of nestled down into the greenery. So that's what I'm doing there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the unbleached titanium to this color. And we'll just add just a few little dots of highlights to these. And really your eye is going to fill in the details. So all we need to do is just kind of do uh, sort of, you know, rows of, of this color. And your eye's going to go, oh, that's a pine cone. Like, you know, you don't have to, like, do, be meticulous about this. You can kind of fudge it a little bit and, um, you know, like that. And then just make sure your rows are kind of, you know how pine cones grow and their rows are, are sort of uh, almost stripy like that. So that's what I've done there. Just kind of picked a, picked a direction and just kind of done my my little dabs in that direction so that they kind of look like they're growing there. Little pine cones. Cute. Alright, I'm going to grab my number one round here. Some yellow, some white. Lots of white and just a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to make my little spots for my lights and I'm just going to kind of circle around 
to create some glow. So I'm kind of dabbing in the color, but then I'm sort of circling around it a little bit to make it look like it's kind of glowing a little bit. Just very lightly. Keep your brush just above it so that only the tip is just barely touching. And I'm just drawing it in a circle. If you want to, you could use a, um, if you've got like a scrubby brush like this, you could use something like that and scrub a little, little spot. This is called a fix it. Um, you could even use a pencil too if you wanted, you know, if you were like a, What? I hate moving now. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> no wonder why Spencer wasn't using this chair. <laughs> like, are you using this chair? He goes, no. <laughs> he didn't warn you at all. No, did he? not at all. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so just doing our little lights all the way around it. Then let's pick some spots for our berries to go. I'm going to use the quinacridone magenta and cadmium red medium for the berries so that they're nice and kind of bright cherry red. And I'm just going to pick a few spots here for them to go and do little dabs little dots kind of clustered together and they can touch I probably need to go a little bit darker with this we'll see how this does on the green though the green will darken it up a little bit so it may darken it enough for us, we'll see. Not sure. Little berries. You could use a toothpick for this if you want to get your dots a little more circular, rounded. Toothpick makes it really easy to get little dots. Or even the back end of a brush. You can do little dots with the back end of a brush. Not that brush, but... <laughs> So I'd like to remind everybody, or people who are new, that if they click the show more button below the video, it'll open up and show all the paints that Angela is using. Yes. And links to her Amazon store where other art supplies are available, including non-art supplies like the yoga block she's using to prop up the painting. Mm -hmm. And then also further down will be the brush to, or links to the brush guys to uh, get brushes and you can you know send that link to your significant other for hints for the holidays <laughs> 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 and they can use the code Angela Fine Art for 5% off their order and they're a great company to work with they get their brushes out quick to everybody yes yes they are highly recommended okay doing my ribbon now Ooh, somebody's got an art question. Okay. Are you trying to use odd numbers while you're painting in the different oh, one, two, pine three, cones? Four, five, six, seven. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did six pine cones. But yes, you can do that. Yeah, that's a that's a good habit to get into. 
I wasn't really uh, wasn't really paying attention much to it, but yes, that's a really good idea. Um, it's a good, you know, good good design uh, just to do odd numbers of things. Uh, okay, so I'm doing my ribbon here. One kind of split here. I did a little bit more of the quinacridone magenta on this one over here. And then I'm going to pick my bow. This bow is definitely not like, you know, it's more realistic looking, so I'm not going to uh, make it look all kind of perfect. It's sort of imperfect here. So there's kind of two loops on this side and one over here that I'm seeing over there. So that's what I'm going to do there. And then I'm going to make it a little bit wider than that, actually. Got a little water drip down on there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some white. Mix that with this. And if I want to make it so that it's not quite so pink, I can add more of the uh, cadmium red to it. And I'm going to go over the top. And I'm doing this while it's wet to kind of get it to blend a little bit, but you can wait for it to dry if you want. Just add a little bit of that color and then add a little bit of color on the ribbon here, just just a tiny bit. And I'm going to use this to highlight my berries too. Little. Bright spots on my berries. And they did dark, dry darker, so. I'm going to take these out. I don't think they're adding anything to the composition. They're kind of clouding the issue over here next to my bow because you can kind of can't really tell where the the red is and the berries start. The red bow ends and the berries start. So I'm just going to do that. Let's add a little bit of this green over the top of some of the berries. Just kind of settle them in if needed. All right. Do some more of this yellow down here. Okay, and now I'm going to go back in with my white, just bright white, here and dot a little bit of bright white on the middle of each of these spots where I've got my lights shining. We got a question. Mm -hmm. They would like to know how could they make their reds more vibrant while painting over a color like blue or green that theirs always looks muddy. Um, using white first or adding white to your red, uh, putting down an opaque layer, kind of almost like a barrier to the color underneath, then adding the red over the top, you'll get a vibrant red. So kind of like Anytime, a yeah, just like even with yellow, it does that uh, a lot with yellow too, because yellow, uh, you know, can be a hard color to to get to show up. Okay, so there's our little bright spots. I'm going to add a little bit uh, more of the really bright 
highlight color just in a couple spots just doing a couple little whoop I want it down there I want it right there I'm hearing myself I think no maybe not I may be hearing you okay I don't know what I'm hearing then those voices that you always say thank you to using purple here and I'm gonna I've mixed the purple with the red and I'm gonna go on the bottom of some of these berries and just now this is another step that you can leave out if you don't need to I'm just gonna add a little shadow to the bottom side opposite side of where I Put the highlight on my berries and then I'm going to use the bright white to put a little shine on just a few of the berries. I don't want to do it to all of them, but just a few of them. There's You're going to see like a little bright white. Make them look shiny. Right, and then my pine cones dried pretty dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit of color to my pine cones too. I got a Patreon question. Okay. Do you know is there an easy way for them while they're on Patreon to find a specific traceable? Using dark color here. Uh, the best way to do it is go on computer. If you do it on computer, you can um, search by the date of the video. That's the best way to do it. Um, it's on the posts uh, tab of Patreon. If you're on a phone, you have to just uh, select the traceables uh, tag underneath any traceable, traceable post. And it'll take you to all of the traceables, but they're by date, the most recent first. And so um, if it's an older video, it can take a while to scroll down to find it, you know. So if you're, if you're wanting it efficient, that's the best way to do it is to do it on your phone or do it on a computer. All right, so there's a little heart hanging from the door here. I did want to put that in because it's cute. Well, duh. I'm gonna do some dark here. Oh, there we go. I've got a little bit of that dark for the thing. Do a little hanger, do a little bit of dark on one side of the heart there. Okay. I right, zoom out there, hun. It's not looking as bright on here. Well, I guess it is starting to. All right, so let's do our, our lights and we'll be done. You'll be almost done. Hashtag splatter movement. Oh, right, right, right. So I'm going to use purple here, and I think I want a smaller liner brush than I have here. I'm going to use a thinner one. This is a 10 aught liner. And I'm using purple. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna or burnt umber to it to darken it up. And we'll just pick a spot for our. I'm going to go underneath our. In there. Pick a spot for our uh, Christmas lights. So they're kind of dangling down here. And off. Adding water is the key when you're using a liner brush. If you if you have your paint too thick, it won't come off your brush at all. It'll just stick on there. So that it has to be very thinned out. And then I want to try not to get my hand in my wet paint over there. I'm going to create my little... 
get a little bit bigger brush for that. Okay, my sockets, my bulbs Get this darker, it feels like it's not quite dark enough. I'm use phthalo blue, phthalo green. I use all my dark colors here, try to get it really dark. I don't know why I didn't just grab black. can split some and put them on the other side too so I'm just trying to kind of get them about the same distance apart spacey is about the same distance okay yeah these aren't the kind that if one goes out they all go out right <laughs> hopefully not not in this fantasy world. Exactly. They never burn out. Not in my painting. You don't. All right, I'm going to use this scrubby brush again. And my yellow, white. And really, if you, well... Let me see, okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of light right here. Very light, very, very light. And I'm gonna do this behind my orange ones. So I've got pink, green, orange, pink, I'm oh, sorry, red, green, orange, pink, red, blue. Uh, these don't make any sense. So I'm just gonna, they're not like, they're not repeating in a normal pattern. So I'm just gonna kind of separate them out as best I can here. So they had some burned out bulbs. They had some extra orange ones. They uh -huh. just plugged them in. They just plugged them in. It, it's so a guy thing. Been, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're, they make sense. They're on. They're on, okay. Yeah. All right, so there's the orange colored lights. Let's do some red adding red to the white here wiping most all of this off you should not even really see the paint on your brush then you know you've got it light enough and then we're going to do that there I'm just going to do it on the other side of all these yellow ones here okay Do some pink, pink and white. White most of it off. Do some of that. There we go. Creating the glow for our little light bulbs. So I want to go a little whiter than obviously than the light bulbs are going to be ending up. Okay, we got some real technical art jargon. Okay. In this question, yes, is a scrubby brush <laughs> that little prince and shader that got some kind of blunt, shaggy end? Yes, this one here. It sounds kind of gangsta. <laughs> 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 yes, I think the answer to that is yes. 
Gonna go with green here. I'm gonna do blue there. Let's do green right here. And do blue here, blue, blue, blue. Okay. Blue and white. So each one of these, I'm just adding a little bit of white to whatever color I'm gonna use for the light bulb itself. And wiping it all off my brush, just about, before I go to my canvas. So that I have very little paint on there for my glow. I need a little bit lighter blue there. It wasn't coming off light enough. There we go. Right now it's just a matter of painting in our little light bulbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this brush because it's about the right size and I'm just gonna try to see if I can just plop it down. I'm gonna grab my phthalo blue and then add just a little bit of white just to make it more opaque on top of the phthalo blue is very transparent. Am I getting in the shot? No. Um, and so I'm going to set my brush down, the tip down, and just plop it down. There we go. It's creating the light bulb shape. I'm going to zoom in here so they can see it. Okay, that's good. Set it down and plop it down. Can you make it a little more difficult? Uh, they say that oh, you're making it look too easy. Looking at too easy. <laughs> We're gonna use some of the dark color here and go along one side here. Add a shadow with the phthalo blue straight. Yeah, that's about right right there. Grab the phthalo green. Do the same thing with it. A little bit of white. Find where I want to put the tip and then just plop my brush down. It'll create that shape for me. Use the dark straight phthalo green here for a little shadow around the bottom side and kind of right where it touches. Use the quinacridone magenta here. A little bit of white. Use the full strength color to add a little. This is actually pretty dark, so I don't think I'm going to have to do much to that. Let's do some red. I'm going to use the cadmium red medium for it, for the red. Add a little bit of white to it. Maybe a little bit of orange. Let's do... Let's do that. 
We'll do an orangey red for this one and an orangey yellow for this one, the yellow ones. There. There. I'm going to use the cadmium red to do my dark area on these. Maybe a little bit of the thalo or the quinacridone, it's not showing up. There we go. And then the yellow, a little bit of the cadmium red medium or cadmium red light here. Kind of an orangey yellow color for these bulbs here. My brush is, my paint's getting sticky so it's not really wanting to work for me here. I'll still work for you, even when I'm sticky. <laughs> Thank you, honey. You're I'm going to use some of this yellow to touch in over the top of my bright color on my... Now those white dots are dried. Yellow. Give it a really bright glow there. Just added a little bit of yellow over the top. And then I'm going to use this cadmium red medium here to put my shadow on my yellow bulbs. <clears throat> and then my white to highlight all of these. Grab some white and just add a little bright flicker in the middle of all of these. You can see the filament. And if it's too bright, you can go back through and kind of dab it off a little bit to tone them down a little bit. Or you can go through and, and um, use the color that's in the bulb itself to wash over the white a little bit, just like we did over here with this yellow to uh, tone it down. But I think that that did good enough right there. Let's do some snow and we'll be out of here. I think we're good. Let's put a little highlight on our little uh, heart on our door too. I'm gonna use a little bit of this light red. It's, it's supposed to be fabric, but I'm not. I'm not making mine fabric. I'm just gonna do a little highlight on there. I'm gonna make it a little bit more bright red. Whoop. Let's get some thumbs up for some splatters, people. You want splatters? Thumbs up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, zoom on out there, hun. Zoom a zoom. Let's get our. There we go. My white. I've got enough clean white here, I think. I'm going to scoop some up. Try to find a clean spot on my palette here. And I'm adding a ton of water to it. Two or three dips there to get it thin. Like milk. It should look like milk. You should be able to see through the palette when I scrape through it. Use a toothbrush, some any kind of like stiff bristled brush. So you want it to resist when you tap. So I'm gonna, just gonna tap my snow on here. Hold it firmly in one hand. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. 
the more watery you have it, the larger your drops will be. So if you want really big watery drops, you can kind of add an extra water and like scoop it up and you can get big splatters, which I don't really why. I don't know why I did that, but just showing you what you can do. Not sure why I did that. I'm not sure what I was thinking there. But, and Mark's not commenting. No, I was uh, getting prepared for my last job here. Oh, okay. Sorry, could you rewind and No, I in? just was like adding really huge water or oh, snowflakes snow on there for some reason, for no reason. Why not? There could be know. large flakes. Yeah, that's true. All right, there we go. We got our snowy. I'm gonna add a little bit of bright back in my. Well, we'll give it some real lights there. Nice. So we had a bunch of viewers, a bunch of first time viewers, and uh, a lot of chats. Nice. But there was only like three or four super chatty people. Nice. Let me see if I can find them. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, the first one was from Chantel, and she says, Thank you so much for such wonderful art class. Uh -huh. My skill hasn't in. She says imposed. Improved. Probably, probably improved probably so much. Auto corrected her. In the past year. <laughs> <laughs> so the art is imposing on her <laughs> in a good way. Who was that? Uh, Chantel. Thank you, Chantel. Yes. Thank you so much for the support. Go fingers width above here. And then we have the next one from Miss Aponder. And it says, thank you both for amazing tutorials. I've learned so much this year. From Amanda Ponder. Oh, thank you, Amanda. And then the last one was from from Debbie. It says, "Love this tutorial. Love all the Christmas paintings you are doing, who are you going to work on? Thanks for all you do. Love you guys." Thank you, Debbie. And thank you so much. That's great. You guys are the best. Yeah. I even thought about adding a tree, but I'm not going to because we're going late. We went really late for Tuesday night, so and our dinner's ready. So, but you could add some tree branches and some like snowy trees, or something like that over here too, if you wanted to. Okay. You could add like a sled. You could add all kinds of stuff. So, Ooh, I like that. I like yeah. to see what they're doing. And I'll have the traceable for this available on Patreon.com/slash Angela Fine Art. Uh, it's a dollar a month for as many traceables as you want to download. So, um, just dollar, not a dollar each. Dollar for all of them. Back to 2017. So, um, anyhow, go ahead and take that off so they can see the finished product there. <laughs> right, there we go. Uh, all right. Hope you try it. It's really fun. Uh, I hope I broke it down into steps so that you could uh, do it yourself. I, I that's the goal. So, I uh, hope you guys uh, try this one. It's a lot of fun. All right, we're going to be back on Saturday with another tutorial. Can't remember what we're painting. Uh, is it snowman? A truck or a snowman or something. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, candles. Is it candles? Oh, we're doing the candles? Oh, I maybe. think so. Maybe. I looked at all of them earlier. And okay. I can't remember well, which one. I don't know. We'll be doing one of those. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it. We've got our Christmas decorations up in the house oh, early. Yes. So. We're, we've already been enjoying our Christmas tree this weekend. It's been awesome. Yes, there's candles on the first. Candles. Okay, awesome. Oh, well, good. That'll be a fun one. So <laughs> prep your canvas with black because we're going to be doing it. And I think I'll probably do the same size. Well, no, I think I'm going to do it on longer canvas. Probably do it on 9 by 12, but prep it with black um, okay, if you're painting along. Your description in this one says 9 by 12. Uh, it will be 9 by 12. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I know on this one I've got to change it. Okay, and, and what, what you did it on is a... 12 by 12. 12 by 12, yes, okay. I'm going to change it, though. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching with us. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye.